Welcome to the RevZilla Redline for January 2018. I'm Spurge. And I'm Alessandra. Coming up on this episode, we'll dive into the best new gear of the motor world from the likes of CD, Michelin, and Shoei. We'll also visit with Lemmy, who's been spending time with Kawasaki's Z900. And between the mods we've made to the time we've spent riding it, he's got a lot of great info for you on this bike. And as always, we've got the gear closeouts you can snag for less from brands like TCX, Cena, and Climb. But before we kick it off, you want to make sure you keep an eye out for Lemmy's first ride review of the Honda Goldwing, which is coming from Austin, Texas, later this month. If you remember back to our common tread coverage at the unveiling in Los Angeles, this is the first time we've seen major changes ushered in since 2001, and it's created quite a fervor in the moto community. Also this month, Speedy is coming to the Winter Doldrums Rescue with $2,000 in gear for our January giveaway. I'm rocking the Originals women's leather jacket and their 2018 lineup has a variety of offerings from street to race and touring. So make sure you check out revzilla.com slash win for details. And while you're drooling over what you can do with that two grand if you win, we're gonna dive into the best of what's new in the world of two wheels this month. So January is going to bring with it some of the freshest products of the new year. And to kick things off, we're going to take a look at the Moto Commuter. And that's why Mr. McHugh on my right hand side is currently wearing the Cena Momentum helmet. Now you might know Cena as the gold standard in Bluetooth communicators, but this is a helmet that they've been developing for years and it's the first time they brought a full-faced helmet to market. They've been working with a premium helmet manufacturer to develop a technology that's really going to change the way we look at rider integration. And that's because their communication device is built right into to the helmet itself. Now continuing on with our theme of versatility, you're going to notice that Pat is wearing the Merlin 3-in-1 Horizon jacket. And this is aimed at you ADV touring riders that are looking for a jacket that's going to tackle multi-seasonality, but it's also going to come in at an entry-level price point. How this is going to differentiate itself from other entry-level American-style jackets from brands like Tourmaster or Olympia is the fact that this has more of a European cut, more European flair, and you're going to have the availability to add on airbag technology and function with this particular jacket at a price point that's going to be the most affordable from other airbag jackets that we've seen. And continuing with that style, take a look at the CD Duna boots that he is wearing. This is a Gore-Tex offering, and a lot of times when we look at those casual riding boots, they take more of a sporty bent to them. They've got those aggressive hard plastic parts on there. This is a step away from that. And what you're gonna see here is a casual pair of riding boots that you can wear to the office as well as around the office all day once you get there. Now, last but not least, let's take a look at the new Michelin Road 5 tire. This is that next generation of Michelin's do everything street tire. Personally, I've ridden the twos, the threes, the fours, and this is that tire that I've seen handle everything from your daily commute, long haul touring, as well as even some lightweight track use. So because of this tire's pedigree, our expectations for it are gonna be rather high. Because of that, we've already had Lemmy take a deep dive into this, and if you want more info, make sure you check out his review. Now that's gonna wrap up the new products for January 2018, but we've got some staff picks for you. And the first pick that we're gonna take a look at is Shoei's new VFX Evo helmet. This is gonna be an update to their premium dirt lid in their line, and the predecessor is what I have in my hand. This is the VFXW, and this is a helmet that I've used for the past two years, and you can tell by the battle scars in here, it served me well, whether it was in the deserts of Baja, Mexico, or out in the New Jersey Pine Barrens, it saved my noodle more than once. So what am I excited to see about the new Evo version? Well, the aggressive styling updates are kind of cool, but really it's the changes they've made to the EPS liner. Shoei's introduced a new med system, which is supposedly helping to cut back on rotational impact. And if you've ever crashed a motorcycle off-road, you know that low speed rotational impacts are most likely the crash that you're gonna have. So sticking with our dirt slash ADV theme here, we're gonna move on to our second pick, which is the Speedy Armor Core jacket. Now, typically from Speedy, when we're looking at a four-in-one jacket like this, really beefy, adventure-oriented, it's normally north of $1,000. So to get all this technology in at this price point is gonna be a huge win. While sticking with this ADV theme, they haven't lost their classic fit, and for Speedy, that means a little bit longer in the torso and the arms, which is why I've always liked this brand. Now we have some additional picks for you, but let's go meet up with Alessandra to talk about those. So our next pick actually comes by way of my pops after a recent trip that we took together. Why? 
because a Gerbing heated jacket liner changed the way he looked at winter riding after doing so for 40 years. We spent the weekend down in the Blue Ridge Parkway and I can attest to the fact that while well, I was freezing my butt off because I was too cool to wear a heated jacket liner, he was warm and cozy the whole time. It was really an aha moment for him and you know it bears mention that my father's not that handy with a wrench but yet using the lead off the battery and the controller, this was something that he could install super easily without even having to tap me on the shoulder for help. So while the Gerbing liner changed your dad's riding experience, I have to say the same for the Knox MK1 Action Shirt. I've been riding in the original iteration of this shirt for two years now and it's really changed what I feel comfortable riding in and it's given me more options. I got tired of bulky armor and jackets that didn't fit me well or my riding style. Now I can wear my favorite shot jacket or a denim riding jacket in the summer. The shirt provides a better armor selection as well as the convenience of really wearing whatever I want. So now that you've had a look inside our gear closet, it's time to check in with Lemmy for his take on what you can expect from the new Ninja 400, which is gonna be hitting our shores in 2018. Let me tell you about the Kawasaki Ninja 400. If you've been following along, Kawasaki's introduced the new Ninja 400, which looks an awful lot like the old Ninja 300, and it kind of is. They held the line on price, they bumped up the displacement a little bit, and I wrote an article about this recently, kind of talking about how I think they took the wrong tack with this bike. Instead, what I thought Kawasaki, or perhaps one of the other OEMs should do, is give us the equivalent of the Mazda Miata. I want the Mazda Miata of motorcycles, a bike that concentrates on handling and concentrates on braking, rather than focusing on horsepower first and adding in those other things as necessary. I think by bringing out a bike like this, one of the OEMs really could hit two segments with one bike. That yes, they could continue to serve the beginner segment. However, they may also be interested in getting some vet riders down into smaller bikes, people who want to rediscover the joy of riding a motorcycle that's just not quite as heavy. Now, I think they could do this really very simply. Throw a different front end on there, something that's got an upside down fork, something that's got dual disc brakes, possibly radial mount, nothing like what I'm talking about really exists on the market right now. When I wrote about this, we had a lot of people comment on this, and I thought there were a couple good comments I wanted to sort of hash out and sort of, you know, talk about. The first one up comes from Cosmic Charlie. Cosmic Charlie says, a 400 class upspec bike is going to cost nearly as much as a leader class one. Sorry, Charlie. Here's the thing. This bike, the Ninja 400, is gonna run five grand. If you jump up to the next bike in Kawasaki's lineup, again, that has upside down front end and decent dual disc brakes on it, we're probably looking at the Z900. Now that's a motorcycle that costs $83.99. That's considerably more money. I think the Kawasaki should be able to get a good front end onto this motorcycle for no more than $1,000 to the consumer. It really wouldn't be that hard. Having said that, moving on to Ian M. Johnson. Ian says, a 400 is really just a weak ass 600 class bike. Congratulations, Ian, you are phenomenal at math. Yes, obviously a 400 is not going to be as strong as a 600. Let's step back in history one second. We'll look at the original crop of 400 sport bikes. Those kind of failed miserably in America simply because they offered all of the weight of a 600, like you're saying, with not quite all of the power. However, those were i4 motorcycles. Remember, this is not an i4 bike, so this 400 would be much slimmer, would not be as, as wide as a standard 600. But the other thing, too, is that it would not weigh nearly as much, be a much lighter motorcycle. Finishing up, we go to Jungle Death. Jungle Death says, Versus X 400, please. Can't agree with you more heartily here, Jungle Death. If you guys remember, I've kind of predicted the demise of the 300 class adventure bike, or at least I'm predicting they're not gonna be explosively popular. And the reason I say that is that a true adventure bike really has to be able to cover big miles off-road, but they also have to be able to cover big miles on-road. A 300 class bike is really gonna be singing its heart out when it's on the highway covering long freeway miles. Something like another 100 cc's here makes a huge difference. So I would agree, a 400 versus X sounds phenomenal. Where I don't think 100 cc's has a place is in a beginner class of bikes. Again, in a class that just recently saw that jump up from Court of War from 250 on up to 300, we certainly don't need another 100 cc's for the people in this class. However, if one of the OEMs did, again, take one of these flyweight motorcycles, put some premium componentry on it, I think that they would, again, serve those beginning riders quite well, but there'd also be a lot of more experienced vets out there who would probably like to reinvestigate what it's like to ride a small bike that doesn't have shitty componentry on it. Now let's get to traffic on the fives. 
For the past five months, Spurge and I have been switching off ride time on the Kawasaki Z900. Cal left us with a long-term loaner, and we've been modifying it just a little bit. Now, Spurge has taken point on that. I've really just been doing all the riding while he's been doing the wrenching, and I really like some of the modifications he's made to this bike. Now, one of the modifications he made to this that I really dig is down here. You can see this Yoshi Alpha T-pipe on here. This is a very short exhaust, very aggressive looking. You might expect it would be really loud, but it's not. It's actually one of the tamer pipes I've heard on this bike, so you might be wondering why we decided to put it on there. Well, the OEM pipe curves upward very sharply. It has a very aggressive angle, and Spurge and I kept smashing our heels into it. We both have fairly large clod hoppers. The Alpha T-Pipe gave us precious, precious clearance. It's probably the first time I've heard of a pipe being installed not for looks, sound, or performance, but instead for ergonomic reasons. It was a very welcome addition to this motorcycle. Now, one of the other things that Spurgeon changed up on here was the saddlebags. He added a set of SW Motec Blaze saddlebags. Now, this is a saddlebag system. I didn't know a lot about this, but Spurge kind of filled me in on it. It's sort of a hybrid between a throwover style bag and something that's more permanently mounted. You can see there is a throwover component here, which makes the installation easy, but there's also a set of bike specific arms that attach to the frame on this bike and they slide into pockets on the Blaze saddlebags. This really helps keep the bags in place, especially when they're unladen. Now, if you're looking at a set of these bags, you should know that they are not waterproof. Instead, SW Motec sends along a set of dry bags to go with these that Spurge and I were both using. So if naked bikes aren't your thing, we do have some stuff for the low and slow crowd. Let's check in with Alessandra and see what cruiser items we have on the agenda. Well, we all know the gripes of stock suspension when it comes to Harley. So it's no surprise that one of the first things that we see Harley riders do is switch up their shocks. Completely agree, Alessandra. Judging by the number of shocks we sell here at Revzilla and the number of installations I do, I think it's safe to assume that many Harley riders are dissatisfied with their rear shocks. So you'll notice on our street glide here, we've got a set of Olin's heavy duty shocks installed. Now, to those of you who are not familiar with the Olin's name, they're new to us for Harley here at Revzilla. It's a name you're more likely to hear bandied about a MotoGP paddock than you are down at your local hog chapter ride. Now we've put these onto our street glide, and as you can see, this is actually set up as a camera bike, hence the seatbelt on here. We rock this bike two up, and we also have lots of equipment cantilevered off the back of it. So it's a heavy duty shock for a heavy duty sort of a scenario. Now I'm really looking forward to putting some miles down to figure out whether these shocks are built for speed or they're built for pleasure. But because it's 28 degrees here and snowing in Philly, I haven't gotten out there just yet. Now for those of you who are looking for a little bit more bike specific part, Alessandro is going to introduce us to a tank. Alessandro, this really reminded me quite a bit of the custom job you just had painted up for your Sportster. Yeah, so Lemmy's talking about the Drag Specialties Diamond Quilted King Peanut Tank. And you know, it's pretty crazy that you're gonna get a custom look like this right from the factory. My Sportster has a regular peanut tank and the first thing that I did was take it to a friend to paint a design on both sides. Now with this, you're gonna get a King Peanut Tank, so you're getting 2.9 gallons and you're gonna get that inlay quilted pattern on the, both the sides as well as the top, which is pretty cool. So really, no matter what paint scheme you choose, you're gonna get a very unique look with this tank. Now, let's switch gears and see what you can snag for less with our closeout. Kicking off deals this month is a perennial favorite, the Shoei GT Air, and it's 25% off in select graphics. Now, the Shoei GT Air owes its popularity in large part due to the versatility of the drop-down sun visor and the fact that it can be worn in both the three-quarter and upright touring positions. The only trade-off is that you lose the Snell safety certification, but that's a minor concession to make if you're not taking this to the track and one of these graphics speaks to you. Now moving on, we also have the Sina 20S Bluetooth communication system that you see mounted to the GT Air. Coming in at 25% off for both the single and dual pack, Sina really sets the golden standard for Bluetooth communication, and their 20S has been their flagship model for the last few years. It even has a handy phone app that you can adjust settings from, like their group intercom function. But moving from the world of commuting and touring, let's get a little bit more rugged for the adventure crowd. Here we have the Nelson Brig Adventure Dry Bags. They'll save you from 10 to 30% off, but keep your gear 100% waterproof. For the price conscious rider, you really can't beat that bang for your buck. And while they're designed for off-road riding, they can really be used on a multitude of different bikes. They also come with no additional mounting hardware required. So we threw these on the KTM with all the supplied lashing straps and we were good to go. Speaking of the KTM rider, the Climb Badlands jacket and pants are both 35% off right now. Now, if you've never heard of Badlands or of Climb, they basically created the category of the four season hardcore adventure outfit that does it all. 
Unless you're racing to car, there's really nothing you can throw at this jacket that it can't handle. But if you like the shell that the Badlands has to provide, let's have a look at what's underneath. So, one of the things to note, if you're not crazy about the way the armor fits for when you're riding off-road, you can go with something like an armored base layer, like the force field one that I'm wearing right now. At around 45% off across their line, the real benefit here is that the armor is actually built into the base layer, so it gives you a really articulated fit. The way that I've been using this over the past few years is I'll wear the force field base armor shirt with a jersey over top for my hot weather off-road riding, and then I use a climb shell on top of that if I need more abrasion resistance. Now, a great adventure pairing for this would be the boots that I'm wearing down here. These are gonna be the TCX X Desert Gore-Tex boots. And the cool thing about this is at 55% off, you're not gonna find a pair of boots that are gonna match this ruggedness as well as that Gore-Tex waterproof protection for this price. The way that I've been using these over the past couple of years, I find them to be extremely comfortable for touring riding, and yet they're gonna be rugged enough that if you wanna hit a dirt or a fire road, they'll give you that level of protection as well. If you want to learn more about any of the gear you've seen today, or you just want to argue with Lemmy about his thoughts on the new Ninja 400, be sure to check out Revzilla for videos, articles, and our expert opinion on everything two wheel. Until then, we'll see you next month on the Red Line. <laughs>